there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs> Dog in the Midlands area, you able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. On today's show, you'll see just how far our dog rescuers will go for little ones like Olivia here. And you'll also find out that sometimes it's not just those with four legs that need rescuing. What's this? It's all right. Coming up. Two Rottweilers abandoned in squalid conditions are in desperate need of help. Yeah, this is when we find dead dogs in the dresses. Hello. An English Bull Terrier takes a fancy to Inspector Sam Durrant. No. Don't hump my leg, though. You don't need that, thanks. No! No, I'm being... No, no, no. And Angelica Bell meets a giant breed of dog being trained to save lives at sea. If it wasn't for his being on the sea that day, I think I wouldn't be here today. You know, I, my, my kids would be without a mum. We sometimes deal with very sad stories on the programme, and you might find that this next one is particularly upsetting. You weather breezy and bright this afternoon with Radio Merseyside News. Good afternoon. Welcome to the programme. And we'll be looking at animal lovers. Are we a nation of animal lovers or animal haters? I thought we have skinny dogs all along the spectrum. But this will remain with me for the rest of my life, really. Inspector Anthony Joins is responding to an urgent call on Merseyside. You know, when you get the call, a lot of them sound really bad. Quite often you get there and it's not as bad as it sounds. Earlier in the morning, a desperately weak and skinny border collie had to be put to sleep by a vet. Anthony's heading to the owner's property to investigate. To get a job and then turn up and it's, it's worse than what it sounded. You know, that's... It takes you by surprise a little bit. He's allowed into the house and finds another desperately thin collie called Freddy. Hey, hey little one. Hey, little one. How are you? You're very skinny. This is a black and white collie called Freddy. He's about two years old. Really concerned that he's absolutely emaciated. <coughs> to starve a dog to the point of death, it's a slow form of torture. Even for a long-haired dog, we can see almost every bone in his body, all of the ribs, the hips, the spine, every bone in the vertebrae. Just uh, lowest of the low, really. Despite Freddy's famished appearance, Anthony discovers a large bag of dog food in the house, unopened. Poor lad must be starving. I can't offer you much food, buddy, until we've done some blood tests, OK? How can you do that? How can you sit there eating your dinner of an evening when your dogs need food and they are pining for food and they must be crying out and you just ignore them? That's one thing I'll never be able to understand, ever. Um... Animal welfare officer John Littlewood is also at the scene. Come on. 
Yeah, just cage. Straight in the cage. Yeah, he did when he comes straight in. Straight in. Keep you going in there, bud. Anthony suspects Freddy's used to being left in a small cage. I like to see cages used as a place of safety. Their bed, and and that, as far as it goes. Anthony's seen enough. Now he must get Freddy the help he desperately needs. <laughs> en route, Anthony arranges for the police to meet him at the vets. Hey, bud. I won't even give you that treat, unfortunately, until you've had a blood test. Hey. Be brave. Come on. I'm your new best mate. You just don't know it yet. I want to carry you down. No weight in him at all. All right, bud. All right, it's OK. Normally quite difficult to tell the body condition of a dog with long hair, and I could see straight away that he was emaciated. Look at these raised bits here. These are the... The, that's the pelvic bones. It's every bit of the vertebrae here. It's just heartbreaking and demoralising that we weren't there for the first one as well. I hate starvation jobs are the worst jobs you can deal with. There's no excuse for that, is the bud? Understandably, Freddy's poor condition is distressing for everyone involved. But he's safe now. Sadly, the same can't be said for his friend Harvey. The police will need to seize his body as evidence. 7.75 kilos. Should be weighing more like 20 kilos. When a dog is starved for a prolonged period, its organs can stop functioning properly and eventually fail. Shouldn't go in the same sentence, should it, really? A two-and-a-half-year-old collie and dead and emaciated. Just really heartbreaking because we haven't managed to save this one. It stays like this, you just think, I need to do something else with my career and with my life. It's so sad. While there was nothing that could be done for Harvey, Anthony and the team are praying they've got to Freddy in time. It's OK. It's OK. On Merseyside, an emaciated two-year-old border collie called Freddy has been rescued by Inspector Anthony Joins. Tragically, Freddy's friend couldn't be rescued in time. All Anthony can do now is seek justice for them both and get Freddy the care he desperately needs. Just going to get a weight for, for him as well. That's what we can see. Sit. Sit. 11.55. Four kilos heavier than your friend. Freddy will be examined by vet Becky McAlpine. There he is. Hey, Freddy. Good hey, Freddy. Boy. Just weighed him in reception. He's 11.55. Obviously, his friend was 7.55. That's obviously the difference, isn't it? Why he's alive. Yeah. Imagine yeah. This is the worst I've seen ever, I would say. There's just nothing of him. He wouldn't last much longer, put it that way. When dogs are as thin as Freddy, their organs can begin to shut down. So Becky needs to take blood samples to see how his are functioning. So if you just sort of stay on back end and then Sarah can lift the head up for me. But as she doesn't know how Freddie will react, she's using a muzzle. Good boy. He's a good boy. Good, good lad. Oh, you brave. Well done. Oh, finished. What a star. Hey, well done, mate. To make sure blood samples aren't affected, they need to be taken before food. With the hard part out of the way, Freddy can finally get something to eat. Can't get it into his mouth fast enough, can he? If it was because of sort of an ongoing health problem, he might be less likely to eat. His appetite might not be as good. Um, but he was starving then, quite obviously starving. And although all you want to do is pile a bowl up full, it's quite dangerous, so you've got to be really careful. So, unfortunately, he'll have to cope with little meals for quite some time. He's definitely been suffering and in pain and emotional trauma of being starved and all of his body shutting down. He'll be struggling when he's trying to move. 
Oh, so he was struggling then just to get up, wasn't he? Yeah, really. So, come on then. Should we go? Come on then. Freddy's taken to Wirral Animal Centre, where he'll get the care he needs. What happened to Harvey makes me really angry. Uh, it's when neglect crosses that border into cruelty. It creates a real rock of anger in my chest, and I'll use that um, to do a real good job on the investigation and make sure that his suffering won't go unanswered, and rightly so. At least tonight, Freddy will have a warm bed and a full tummy. See you later. We'll be back with him later. From one Anthony to another, Inspector Anthony Pulfer is on his way to a property in South East London. We received a call from the local police force with concerns for a couple of Rottweilers at an address. The police can't locate the dog's owner and are worried about how long they may have been left for. They believe these dogs have been abandoned for up to three to four weeks. Anthony's also concerned about how the Rottweilers will react when he arrives. Like any dog who's scared, they could behave aggressively. Knowing that these dogs are, are Rottweilers, it does worry, you know, an inspector, because any Rottweiler could be a, an issue when they're scared. And there's just no doubt in my brain, I think how powerful that dog's jaw is, and I would not want to be on the wrong end of a Rottweiler. So you can really change your ways to try and bring them down, try and get something that makes them tick, whether it be a toy, food, soft voice. You might hear my softest voice going today, but it's amazing how much difference it makes. Soft voice, I remember that. It's pretty bad in there. It's a lot of, lot of clutter. But this address can't be that big. When you go into situations where the, the address is absolutely filthy, you don't get used to it, really. And you sort of don't realise how someone can get themselves in that position. Who knows when this gentleman was last seen, but looking inside the address, it shows a person not coping. You know, this is when we find dead dogs. It's all creating quite a worrying picture. Neglect. The police still haven't located the owner, but when they came by yesterday, they discovered the house unlocked with the key in the front door. Hello, buddy, you all right? Hello there, you all right? All right, how's it going? Yeah. So what it is, yeah, we, we came because it were like a worry about the safety of the bloke in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the welfare, yeah. So we've heard the dogs barking, yeah. shouting, no, no answer. So we've gone yeah, in, so we right state in there, there's... Feces everywhere. Yeah. I think we've got to get them out, haven't we? Absolutely right. This is the dog's living environment. Lots of feces, urine soaked floorboards, inadequate bedding. It's not having its needs met with food and water. They're stressed and can sometimes make them a little bit aggressive. And at that point, you've got to handle them correctly, do it at their pace. And, uh, and getting them out of that situation. In the garden, Anthony finds what he's looking for. Soft voice, soft voice. What's this? It's all right. Good hello. dog. Seems to be working. Here comes hello. There's a good doggy. There's a good doggy. It's OK. Hello. It's OK. Hello, it's OK. If I pass one, I'll get a yeah. sip on the other. Good Come dog. On, good good dog. dog. Yeah, good. Come on, then. Do you want to go with? Do you want to come with? Do you want to come with? Looks like these rotties are in a hurry. These dogs were just, I think, keen to go for a walk. And once a slip lead was, you know, put to their heads, they were on the leads, out the door, get me out of this house and into that van. I think they wanted to be out of that address, really. And I think I did as well, because it was so filthy. Despite their ordeal, the dogs, called Angel and Ricky, seem to be holding up well. In fact, very well. Good dog. In you go. Good girl. 
Good dog. Go. We haven't got thin dogs. I can't, I can't believe they're not thin. Seem active, seem alert. And as Rottweilers go, in good shape. Thankfully, despite being abandoned, Angel and Ricky appear to be well fed. Come in. They'll be checked over by a vet before being moved to an animal centre. We often see dogs being rescued from truly tragic situations, but sometimes the tables are turned and it's those on four legs that come to our rescue. Angelica Bell has been finding out about a very special breed of dog that's being trained to save people in life-threatening situations. This is Fozzy. He's a rescued Newfoundland whose previous owners gave him up when they could no longer look after him. But this big fella has not let his past hold him back because he's doing something quite extraordinary, aren't you? Aren't you? He's training to be a water rescue dog. Where should we go now? Go that way? I think so. Come on, let's go for a run. Come on. Woo! <laughs> Newfoundlands are fantastic working dogs and can be employed as part of sled teams, bringing in fishing lines on boats or pulling heavy loads on farms. But they excel in the water. You all right? Yeah, yeah, fine, thank you. Come on, Come on Fuzzy. I'm meeting David Pugh, who teaches dogs like Fuzzy to save lives at sea. Thank you, nice boat. Dave is going to show me these incredible canines in action. OK, here we go. This is Andy and Tuki jumping off the jetty. Here we go. Andy reaches the catch at his first. Tuki is following behind to do the rescue. Newfoundlands love the water. And their innate swimming abilities, webbed feet, rudder-like tail and formidable strength, make them brilliant water rescue dogs. Picked up the rescuees and is swimming back to the boat. Come on, you guys! David has trained over 130 dogs who help save lives alongside marine search and rescue organisations. Dog in first. Rescue. Over. It's amazing to see what they do, isn't it? Yeah. One of David's most successful trainees was a dog called Wiz. Tony Curtis knows only too well the life-saving service dogs like Wiz provide. Nice oh, to meet thank you. you. <laughs> Tony, thank you for speaking with me. Tell me what happened to you. Um, I was on holiday with my family and we'd gone to the beach this one particular day. It was a hot day. I went for a swim, it was cool off. Before I knew it, I was out further than what I'd actually swam. I realised then it was a, a rip current. Panic then really set in. I honestly thought that my life was gone. I went under a few times. Uh, I came up and I heard someone just shout, grab the dog. Well, could feel this massive dog and I just grabbed it and wow. It pulled me through the water. Saved my life. If it wasn't for his being on the sea that day, I think I wouldn't be here today. You know, I, my, my kids would be without a mum. Thank goodness Wiz was there that day, and Tony wasn't the only person he saved during his career. Wiz saved the lives of another eight people during his life and was posthumously awarded an animal OBE for his bravery. Wiz was adopted by David after a bad start in life, so he too was a rescue dog, just like Fozzie. Hello. There we go, boss. Hi, uh, Tony, Hi. Luke, nice let me show your hand. Nice to meet you. Hi, Luke. Hiya. Nice to meet you, sir. Well, Fozzie's yours, isn't he? Yes, giant cuddly bear. We've had him now a couple of years, and uh, he's part of the family now, so yeah. we're, we're, uh, he's settling in well. So you've got your wetsuits on because you decided to volunteer today. Thank yes. you so much. So sure. should we get on? Let Fozzie do his thing. So on your way, chaps, let's try it. And while Fozzie is only at the beginning of his training, David is keen to show me what he can do already. Ready, Fozzie, ready. Seriously, go. With three children to pull and the yellow float adding resistance in the water, 
This exercise really tests Fozzie's strength and stamina. Go on, Fozzie. One day, Fozzie may be rescuing for real. Come on, boss. Well done. But for now, this is still pretty impressive. <laughs> well done, Fuzzy. Really good because it's a dog that's not been training with us very long. He's done the exercise perfectly and really pleased. Well, it looks like rescue dog Fozzie is well on his way to being a fully-fledged lifesaver. So the next time you're having fun in the water, it could well be Fozzie and his friends who are looking out for your safety. The initial information was dog was collapsed, has been hit by a car. Coming up, all is not as it appears when Inspector Sam Durrant is called to help an English Bull Terrier. Just go through sort of what you saw and what you did, is that all right? And can famished Freddy come back from the brink? This dog has had me worried sick. Just wanted more than anything for this dog to make it. Earlier, we met emaciated Freddy, who was rescued by Inspector Anthony Jones. So he was struggling then just to get up, wasn't he? Freddie was just over 11 kilograms, half of what he should weigh, and was days away from starving to death. His friend Harvey weighed even less and tragically didn't make it. Anthony's been so concerned, he's been to see Freddie every day since he was rescued three weeks ago. I have got about 50 more grey hairs over this dog. This dog has had me worried sick. It was so heartbreakingly sad about Harvey, and I just wanted more than anything for this dog to make it. I was incredibly worried. The manager of the animal centre was probably sick to death of me ringing in, because I was, has he gained any weight today? Is he all right? How is he? And Anthony's been worried with good reason. He'd actually lost um, half a kilo. He'd gone down to just under 11 kilos, and we were really, really, really worried in case he'd just been pushed too far to the brink and he wasn't going to recover. But now... Freddie's starting to put on some much-needed pounds. After about five or six days, then, um, he he just started gaining weight and he hasn't really dropped it since, and it started to go up and up and up, which is just... Oh, I can't tell you how happy I was. I was, I was literally overjoyed. It would be an absolute joy for me to see you scoff your dinner. Fred, can't eat all that. Watch me. Hey, buddy. You ready? Yeah? Take your time, OK? This, you're not going to be starved here. You're never going to be, you know, your next meal's not going to be far away. Take your time. Hey. To see just how well Freddy is doing, he's going back to vet Becky McAlpine. Time for your weigh in, Freddy. Moments of truth, buddy. Come on. Come here. No, this way. Come here. Sit down. Sit down. Sit. Sit. Yeah, 16.10. In just three weeks, Freddie's gained nearly 50% of his body weight, which is great news. So he's got a bit of weight to go, but he's doing... I'm absolutely over the moon with his progress, and he's doing amazing. Come on, then. let's go and see you back. Come on. Hello. Hi. Hi, Freddie. Hi. Hi, handsome boy. Doesn't he look fab? He's so much brighter, yeah. isn't he? He looks fab. Obviously, we've still got a little way to go, but he's put on so much weight. Just carry on feeding him. Once he gets to his target weight, then we can get him a new home. Yeah. All being well, but he looks great. Really, really pleased with his progress. Come on, then, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got anything. <laughs> Come on. Right, thanks again, Beck. You're really appreciate welcome. all your help. We'll see you soon. See you later. Bye. Bye. Um, we're really, really happy with his weight gain. He's doing really well. Looks really promising. There were some discrepancies on his blood work uh, when we first did that due to the starvation. So in a couple of weeks' time, we'll do another weight check and recheck his bloods just to make sure that they've all come back down to normal, which hopefully they will have done. Go, 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 go
this will be one of the most rewarding parts of my career, really, to see a dog that's been so close to the brink of death. And uh, he's going to go on to make someone really, really lucky to have him. Just enjoying being part of a family where he's, where he's loved. I can't wait to see that day. a bite, but this was an avocado injury. <laughs> I stabbed my own hand. I'm pretending it's a bite. Those avocados, vicious. <laughs> so that just gets me trying to be healthy. <laughs> I'm going to stick with chocolate. Inspector Sam Durrant is at the tail end of a late shift when she responds to a call about an injured dog. The caller has said that the dog is a white bull terrier. We don't know who owns it. There's mention of having seen the dog be hit by a car. It sounds like this dog is growling, uh, perhaps probably in pain. So, yeah, you just have thoughts going through your head, like, what's happened to him? Can you get near him? Is it safe to get near him? You can never really predict what you're going to get. To minimise the risk of further harm to the dog or herself, Sam calls for backup and animal welfare officer Phil Hayes meets her at the scene. Hi. Hey, darling. Right? Yeah, how are you? But like Sam's own injury, all is not quite as it seems. Who are you? Hey, young boy. Hello, gorgeous. The call we had was that he was collapsed and dying. What? Uh, whoever's called us. Thankfully, just a few hours earlier, the bull terrier had been taken under the wing of David and his family. Just look at your little face. And this friendly chappy seems to be completely unharmed. Hello. What's your name? What's your name, eh? What's happened to you, my lovely? Are you gorgeous? He's a bit grubby, isn't he? Yes. Phil has found a microchip and is trying to track down the dog's owner, which leaves Sam to get to the bottom of what happened. Hello, gorgeous. So, have you got... Can you just go through sort of what you saw and what you did? Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Just so we've got, like, a full story. Um, a homeless guy, he come in. He said, basically, there's a dog outside. So I went out there, and he was out there. There was... I've got an OQ unit out there that's got some drawers and stuff like that in it. So apparently he was sleeping in there. Strangely, the dog was discovered in an old cupboard. You're a bit like the dog out of, um, Oliver. <laughs> Is he called Spot? From Oliver. Bullseye! It's Bullseye from Breaking Mother's Art. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he reminds me of. He's all grubby as well, just like him. He is. Bullseye, yeah. He's cute, isn't he? He's absolutely as good as gold. I like the name Bullseye. Maybe it'll stick. No, don't hump my leg, though. I don't need that, thanks. No! No, I'm being... No, 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 no. Could just call him Humpy. The initial information was dog was collapsed, had been hit by a car, was bleeding, was being aggressive. That seems to be all completely incorrect. And we have what looks like a very healthy English Bull Terrier. Wants to hump my leg the entire time, but lovely. <laughs> I was worried about him being aggressive with my injury from the avocado, but, yeah, he seems to be fine. Sam artfully dodges Randy Bullseye's advances, and she's not getting lucky with his microchip either. So it might be an unregistered chip, or it might be that it's just... We can't get through to particular databases, so I'm, I'm now just having a look to see if there's a dog warden to cover this area. Really, it's the responsibility of the dog warden for an uninjured, stray dog. Normally, local councils and their dog wardens will take custody of healthy strays. OK. They work until 3pm. But with the warden's office closed, Sam needs to find Bullseye a bed for the night. overnight an option for you or not? I would say, yeah. With the family happy to put Bullseye up, he can be collected the following day. Good boy. That's the number you need to ring in the morning. Yeah. If there's any problems, then you need to give us a call back. No, he's, but he's as good as gold. He's, he's good. obviously quite happy and safe. But I've put a bag of dried food in there, so give him a little bit tonight and a bit in the morning. Right. Give them a call sort of as soon as you can, 8, 9 a.m., okay. and they'll come and collect him. OK, brilliant. So, see you. Go on in, then. 
English Bull Terriers, but they're not a really common breed, so you'd imagine someone's missing him. Um, the local dog warden might have some knowledge. Hopefully, Bullseye will be reunited with his owner soon. But for now, Sam is grateful to the Good Samaritans. The young lad was very much like, yes, we'll keep him overnight. I think he's fallen in love with him. Really sweet dog, really friendly. Got people like that that can help out. It just takes the pressure off of us. Boy. Trying to find a space in one of our hospitals will take up the space for an injured animal. If he doesn't get claimed by an owner, like we can't find the owner, he'll get home straight away. He's lovely. So, yeah, it's great all round. I'm catching up with Sam to find out more about what to do if you see a stray. So, Sam, what should you do? What should one do if you see a dog wandering the streets? Try and get the dog confined and then contact the dog warden for the local authority that you're in and they will deal with stray dogs. So give them a ring and they'll come and collect the dog as soon as they can. But people quite often ring you instead of ringing the council, right? Yes. Obviously, if you can't get through to them or you've got a dog that's quite badly injured and you need some immediate help, then we're going to be there to help people with that. So when, when do you get involved? When is an injury or when a dog's in real danger? Uh, well, either, really. Um, the council do deal with dogs that are sick and injured as strays as well, but we are not, we're not going to leave a dog that needs some help, so people can always ring us. Do you hear that? We have to ring the council. Don't run off. Dogs do get out, don't they? Get out yeah. of the gardens and things like that. They do, and it's really important that you keep your details updated, both on the microchip details and also on the um, tag that's on the car. Right. And but we do recommend, yeah. obviously, a, a phone number as well, so people can get hold of you quite quickly. Yeah. If you've got your dog microchipped and the dog your dog runs off, mm -hmm. then what you can do is go on to, or ring the microchip company that you've used. Mm -hmm. You can notify them that you've lost your dog, and you can also, uh, at that same time, just check that all your details check are your up to date. Right yeah. Address. Yeah. And if the dog does get out, you need to notify the dog warden very quickly. Any local vets will be able to keep details for you as well. Contact your neighbours. So just try and get word out very quickly that your dog's gone missing, really, and you've got much more chance of, of finding him or her again. So, Olivia here will have a chip. Yes. Should we yep. check for it? So, you'd use a scanner like this. You've got a chip this. scanner. And it will oh. come up with a number. Also. And if you've got a German Shepherd, my advice would be don't keep it on a table. No, on the floor. On the floor. <laughs> to put you on the floor? You're not a table dog. No. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. You're all right. You come say hello. Earlier, we met Angel. It's OK. Who had been abandoned in her home. Go on, out you go. Good dog. Good dog. She's now at Millbrook Animal Centre, but her experience may have left a lasting impression as she becomes anxious when alone. Hi, Angel. Hello. No dog should be left to fend for themselves as Angel was, but in order to be rehomed, she does need to be comfortable being by herself for short periods. Good girl, you stay there. Stay. The centre has been doing their best to help Angel, but she's proving a tough nut to crack. So certified clinical animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead is stepping in. I think it's kind of a normal state of affairs to miss those that you love when you're not with them. The big issue is, of course, when that goes beyond this sort of normal range and then actually we're looking at a behavioural problem. To help ease her anxiety, Sarah wants to build Angel's level of independence and a good way of doing this is by giving her a space of her own. Look, what have I got for you? While we've been in here, she's wanted to get on the sofa. So what I really love her to do is to settle down on, on the floor. Sarah uses a lead to help settle Angel on her bed. Yes, what a good girl. Yeah, dear, good girl. What a good girl. Wow. So in a fairly short space of time, we have managed to get her to settle down and be calm and relaxed. 
but I think we would want to supercharge our training if we possibly can. And one of the ways of doing that, I have found, is with dogs that are a little bit addicted to human contact, we can't just let them go cold turkey. We have to say we replace your addiction with something else. So I love interactive chew toys. While they think about the toy, they're not thinking about you. So, what have I got for you? Oh, my goodness. If you put food inside them, it em actually employs the dog, gives them rewards while they're chewing the toy. And then I say, look, that's for you. And then I'm out of the picture. This is about her enjoying her chew toy on her nice, comfy bed. When she's really involved with it, she's got her tongue right inside, she thinks, this is like Christmas. Christmas? That's not what I want for Christmas. This is the moment that I would say I can get up, walk around, maybe walk in and out of the door. So she's starting to get this association. When she has the chew toy, the human isn't around. That's the, the kind of connection we want her to make. Let's see if she pays any attention to where I've gone. Just perfect. I do a little pretend I might I might nip out to the bins. Yes, I might do. I could probably even step out, step back in again. That was quick. Dog stays calm and relaxed. Well, looks like Angel's got this licked. And then because I'm coming back, I want her to understand that she only has the Kong now when no human is present. So I'm going to do a swap, because that's always a polite way of taking a toy off a dog. Especially if it's a big dog like Angel. That becomes mine again, goes back in the fridge for the next training session. What else is in the fridge? I'm not eating in your house. So in theory, after about a week, 10 days, most dogs start to say, when are you going out? Off you go, go to work. Get me my chew toy. That's what you're looking for. What it really needs now is somebody to be able to do that every day and to just increase the amount of time that she can just have that calm downtime when nothing else is happening. Um, and I think pretty much within a week she'd have this scratch. She really is an angel and I think she's going to make somebody a fantastic pet. Sit. Coming up. We'll catch up with Freddy and see if he's managed to find his forever home. Come on then, bud. Earlier, emaciated Freddy was rescued by Inspector Anthony Joins. He was half the weight a border collie his size should be and was days away from death. 11.55. Four kilos heavier than your friend. Sadly, it was already too late for his friend Harvey. Just really heartbreaking because we haven't managed to save this one. A post-mortem and blood tests revealed there were no underlying health conditions affecting either dog, so their extreme weight loss was purely due to starvation. The evidence collected during Anthony's investigation was brought before the courts. So he was struggling then just to get up, wasn't he? Freddie's owners pleaded guilty to causing unnecessary suffering to both dogs. They received a 12-week suspended prison sentence, were required to attend a 30-day rehabilitation activity and were banned from keeping animals for 10 years. The owners said things had got on top of them and they were struggling to cope. And here's Freddy now. Doesn't he look fantastic? He's back to his ideal weight and he's doing very well indeed. Not only is he looking brilliant, but he's also found his forever home with Bill and Monica Nielsen. Should we meet them now? Is that a yes? Not only is Freddy up to weight, something tells me he's going to fit right into his new home. I saw Freddie, so I said to Bill, can we have him? I want to make his eyes shine again. And uh, lo and behold, we brought him home. And life has never been the same no. since. <laughs> and Freddie's been making himself very comfortable. Getting all the attention that he needs. Demands, you, you mean? Well, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> to lay under the yeah. thumb, yeah. 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 Seems Freddy's the captain of this ship, and he likes keeping to a tight schedule. He'll get up and have his breakfast. He'll get us up and have yeah, his breakfast. Yeah, he gets us yes. up and has his breakfast, and he likes sardines in oil. That's for his coat. And then he has a lovely run, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, and then he has his tea at 4 o'clock, and um, then he goes to sleep. 
<laughs> Usually on one of the beds, which is a terrible thing. We've never had dogs sleeping on the bed before, but Freddie does. Freddie does what he likes. Freddie was used to spending his time in a small cage, but now Monica and Bill will be expanding his horizons. So he's going to France soon on a nice big holiday? That's his identification. Our last dog filled up three passports, and we're hoping that Freddie will do the same. <laughs> But before we say bon voyage to Monsieur Freddy, it's time for a petite promenade. Well, he says, I think it's time I went out for my walk soon. <laughs> How much you got? He loves being out, yeah, yeah. He's got a load of friends, dogs, of course. Natural mo. He feels happy, he feels safe, and he just runs sleep till you call him. Today, Freddy's being surprised by one of his human friends. There he is. Hi, Freds. This is Freddy. Anthony, Hi. really nice to meet you. Hi, Pleasure. You Hi, my friend. How are you? Hey. How do you think he looks? I think he looks spectacular. He's still really food orientated, yes, yeah? Yes, yes. Pardon you, Freddie. Yeah. He's constantly yeah. burping. He's a good burper. <laughs> Better out than near, eh? So I heard he's got his own passport now. Is that is that true? He has indeed, and he's going to France. That is amazing. Going news. visiting friends and family. It's such a pleasure to see him, honestly. Sit. The speed of him. Amazing. Happy little dog, isn't he now? Yeah. Just learning loving, to play. Just loving life, isn't he? This case, for me, was one of the saddest cases I've dealt with in, in years. A dog like that, you end up forming a real close bond that can last a lifetime. He's got a nice glossy coat. He's got a really lovely couple uh, who dote upon him. And I just think he's landed on all four paws, really. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Get away from this dog now! Inspector Anthony Joins refuses to be intimidated as he rescues a dog with a serious skin problem. It's the closest I've come to being assaulted, I think, for quite a while. What are you so worried about? Upheaval for Angel, the anxious Jack Russell, who has to find a new, less hectic home. The owner's upset, but she's doing the right thing. She's a busy lady, busy family. Just had a moment, didn't you, Taz? A really silly moment. And Hershey Bowl is called in to help an owner whose dogs have an uncharacteristic fight. You know, my job isn't just about rescuing dogs and, and, and helping them. Sometimes I end up rescuing people. <laughs> <laughs>